All right. So what we have seen in the last classes, right? So we have um, study about the uh, single end, single end, uh, double reinforcement uh, cases. In addition to that, what we have learned is the load distribution, uh, load uh, distribution, how it's going to happen, right? So if you want to know further about these things, so these are the load pattern that has been defined based on the heel line theory. So if you want to know further about the heel line theory, so there are various pattern, uh, various pattern available. So based on the thickness and the support conditions, right? The, the failure pattern of the particular slabs will be varied, but we are not going to go into this detail, right? So what we are going to see is we are just going to looking at this only so generally what we are going to assume is assume is the 45 the the failure line will uh, failure line will occur with the uh, 45 degree of angle right so this is up to this level we have i mean we have studied that so further to that if you want to know further i mean if you are i mean if you don't understand the things that what i am saying or if you don't need uh, if you need uh, further information so i have already attached some of the documents additional as the as the additional uh, references so we can go and read further to that uh, if you want that you can read most of the thing on the i start i start manual so everything is available on online and i have uploaded most of the documents to the lms so you can go and refer the things that you want so everything has been uploaded so if you don't understand the things so don't just waste your time so just go and read the things and try to clarify or you can talk with me in person right so let's begin the design so i'm going to start with the design so we can start with the design and we can move to the i mean we can we can correlate the theory so what you have seen in the last class uh, some of you download the design that i have uploaded earlier but that is actually for the actually for the flange cases but since we didn't start any kind of design related to beam i thought to start with the simply supported beam design right so the simply supported beam design it's uh, the simply supported or whatever the beam design the concept of the uh, beam design will not be Vary. at the same time you need i mean you always have an idea that right so if you if you want to design any kind of the horizontal members so it could be the slabs or it could be beam the design procedure is most of the time it will be same and there will be uh, there will be similar uh, there could be some of the differences but that can be not much so always have an idea about so if you want to design whatever the whatever the horizontal members that it, the design procedure will be almost same so which means that what you have seen in the slabs and at the same time what you are i mean uh, uh, what we are what you are going to learn in the beam design will be always same so that's what i wanted to mention that right so you can see here so this is what we are we are currently working with so you know that these are the one way slabs right so the one way slab means that what will happen is load is generally transferred to the longest path of the beam right so even some of the one way slab that you can see there will not be any beam so so for example i can say that if you if you are if you had a chance to go any of the high i mean any of the high rise or the three story or two story building so when you walk through the walk through the corridor right so if you if you look it up right so, so the uh, most of the beams are uh, most of the beams are located something like it even uh, some of the i mean even uh, some of the building there will not be any beam something like this right so generally these kind of beams we can design it as the simply supported beam so if you look at the design if you look at the design problem you are uh, you are given right so what we are going to do as a first step is to right so you can see up to these are the floor levels right and this is the staircase so generally if we are speaking about the staircase and the other part of the slabs right so these things we can consider it as the just the 
just uh, simply supported beep and this is what we are going to perform in this class right so which means that you are going to do your own design and most of the evaluation will be done in the class so make sure to present the class and get the marks otherwise we will lose your marks so if we consider the typical rc beam design right so you can see here right so i just wanted to show you in the graphical re uh, graphical representation there you can see these are the these are the top bars and these are the bottom bars so sometimes we can refer it as the compression steel and the tension steel right also you can see this is what we are mentioning as the shear links or the stirrups right so this bottom part we can generally refer it as the cover so it, the cover of the beam or slab or whatever it is if you just consider or if you just calculate one part of the cover the entire cover will be almost same so it could be the bottom cover or the top cover or the side part of the cover will be same for every cases and these are the these are the spacing that we are uh, mentioning or in in other words we can mention it as the shear link spacing right so these are the term that we would be using right and uh, these are just a just a graphical representation so these are the total depth and effective depth comes uh, concept you know that already right so these are the bw or the base or either we can refer it as the width of the beam so when we deal with the beam as as same as the slabs right we don't know any kind of dimension of the beam right so we don't know any kind of steel so what is the uh, what is the number of steel that we need to provide it so what we are going to do is we we have to do some more assumption and we are going to check that whether our assumption is valid for the based on the hero code so that's what we are going to deal with so most of the things that you can see that we will be taking some of the assumptions and we will be moving forward so uh, this 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 an example is i have written everything you need right so in, including if you can look at some of the uh, some of the thing i am i have mentioned in the uh, different color pens so these are just an in instruction so when you perform the design and if you had some of the clarification or some of the values are not just as what it is in the design then you can refer and have an idea about so every descriptions are written and especially you can see most of the things that i have mentioned the different colors so here also for the shears also uh, I, have, I have mentioned everything so please go through it right so don't uh, come to the class without i mean try to even though if you don't understand everything uh, try to go for each steps and have an idea about how these equations are uh, equations are placed right so since there are so many equations right so definitely that will be the difficult task right so let's start the design so as what we did in the slab design right we have initially i mean we have initially found our effective depth so you know that this procedure so generally i am going to assume as the five meter five meter length of the slabs so which means that my beam also will be the five meter or in other term my span will be the five thousand or the five meter and these 20 that can be found through the Euro code uh, table uh, uh, table 10.3 you can see here right so since we are dealing with the beams we need to refer only this part of the column so when we consider this part of the column right we are going to deal with the beam so we need to deal with the simply supported beam so my row will be uh, i mean my row will be 20 and that is what i have placed here and these are the I mean these are the correction factors so when we have the rectangular beam right so we we are assuming this is as the one and we will be able to find my minimum effective depth and then i am going to i am going to proceed with this and i will make some of the assumption and i will validate that whether my assumption is correct or not so you can see so many i mean different kind of the things it will come to this design so just to given overall idea so right after this you will have a clear idea about i mean uh, i mean whatever the case is given you need to deal with like so the second step is 
do you cover calculation right so the cover calculation so what i'm assuming is i'm a, i'm going to assume my ex, exposure class as xc1 and the congress strength and these things that you know already but in 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 addition to what we did in the last class i am assuming the nominal aggregate size so you know that you might have studied from the concrete design right so the nominal uh, nominal aggregate size will vary to generally 90 millimeter or it could be 20 millimeter so i i am i am taking this assumption so you will i mean you will understand why i uh, why i consider this in the when we perform the design so just make the uh, just make the cover calculation right so you already know that so the first step that what we need to do is right either we can go for the durability case or the bar so when we considering the durability case right i have i mean i took it as 15 millimeter why is that right so if you if you go and check the exposure condition right which is which is already mentioned so since my ex, uh, exposure condition is xc1 right so you can see as c20 over 25 that i assume so my nominal cover will be i mean the nominal cover will be 15 millimeter so this is what it's been done here also when you consider the c minimum right which is which is related to bar right so generally we assume the dimension of or the diameter of the bar so that's what it's been done and i will i need to find my c minimum as 15 millimeter which could be the maximum value of this these combinations right so the 10 is that we usually pro, uh, provided for the uh, tolerance or the safety purposes so if these values are not satisfied we need to go for the 10 so you know these things and the deviation factor right so i assume it as the 10 millimeter so you, uh, if the construction considerations are very very quality i mean the quality assurance and everything has been maintain then you can go like to like five millimeter but generally what we i mean what we usually do is we uh, we have to assume as the 10 millimeter right so up to this level there will not be any issues but the real issues i mean uh, not the issues right so the real case is going to happen from here you can see i am going to do the cover for the fire design as you know when we performing the cover design for the fire right so you can uh, you can refer the section 4.6 and you know if it is if it is column or the slabs or whatever it is we need to choose the appropriate uh, appropriate uh, uh, table so since i am dealing with the beams i'm going to check for the first part right so others are the slabs so since i am going to deal with the beams i need to take table 4.6 six now i assume right my r as the 90 minutes so since i assume r as the 90 minutes right so you can see here there are various parameters for the simply supported beam right so there are around four parameters like you know the four values are available so which one you can choose Right. So generally, when we deal with most of the simply supported and the medium rise building, so the medium rise means since our school buildings like, you know, it could be the three story or four story maximum, it could be four story, right, we can go up to the first three columns, right, so 400 is a little bit too much for our consideration. So either, either three of them, you can choose whatever you want. Right, so it is since it is a uh, sure design, right? You have to choose. So I choose, right? I mean, you can see from here, I have mentioned the two parameters, right? So I choose as the AS45, either you can uh, use AS45 millimeter or the AS40 millimeter. So you know what does it mean by A, right? So if you, if you go and check here, right, you know this is the A. Right. So whatever the values you have seen in the table is recommended value. So the recommended value means that whatever the value of US or that we have assumed should be less than to that value. Right. So 
the next task is to I need to find my A. So my A means right. So if you consider the uh, beam something like this, right? You know. So we are not going to complete entire design, right? We know right after we perform the design, our beam cross section will be something like this, right? So this is the A, right? So this is the A. I need to consider my A whether it is satisfying the conditions already mentioned in the it in the code, right? So I know my cover is twenty five. Right, so to find this A, right, so what are thing will come? This is the cover. In in addition to that, the stirrup diameter. So since I am consider this part, right, so the uh, the stirrup diameter also will come. Plus half of the bar thickness. So that is what I have done here, and I have found my A actual, which is the thirty seven. Millimeter. Now I am going to check with the A recommend, right? So you can see A recommendation is mentioned that if I want to hold the building within the ninety meters period, my A should be forty five millimeter. But the calculated A, I I got it as the thirty seven millimeter. So what I can do is, right? I can assume this is as my cover, and then I can consider the Total cover thickness. So this is this A as I need to choose is for I, I mean I can choose it for my cover calculation and eventually I will I mean I can find the C nominal as how much it would be in order to satisfy this condition. So I am doing reverse calculation. So this is what we call it as the reverse calculation. So I I, I am performing based on the value it's given by the euro code and I am finding my nominal cover. So I hope you you can understand this up to this level. So if you don't understand, please ask. I will tell you again. So this is what what we do is we are doing the reverse calculations to get my nominal uh, nominal cover in order to satisfy these conditions, right? So you can see other thing is B minimum, right? We will be coming to this point later. Now right after I have found my uh, C nominal, right? What I need to do is So I have found my the C nominal. Now the second step, I mean the next step is to I need to find my effective depth of the beam because when I change the cover, right? Effective depth and overall depth also will be very you no know, because uh, that is what we have done it for the slab now, right? So we need to find the effective depth and before that I need to find the total depth by incorporating all the parameters I have calculated so far. So you can see the 250 is actually the uh, that's that's what I have I have found as the minimum effective depth, right? And plus this is the cover and this is the uh, half of the bar diameter. So you can see I just incorporate the uh, half of the bar diameter because the other part I have I have I have mentioned already here. So I can just go with The calf, uh, calf of uh, this part to complete the entire design. So even you can, if you if you wish, you can additionally add the uh, stirrups. So we, uh, I mean, so we have we have incorporated here. So what will happen is your thickness will increase, right? So it is up to up to you. So whatever the way you want, you can perform the design. But it will not change much. No, even it will go like two two thousand nine. I mean two hundred ninety seven. So Based on the parameter I have received for the overall depth, right? I am going to assume my overall depth will be three hundred millimeter. So, overall depth means, right? If you consider this beam, right? So the total height of the beam will be given as the three hundred millimeter. Up now, I I think you have. I mean, there will not be any issues, right? So if you have any issues, you can ask. So I have found my overall depth. Then next step, you might have, I mean, uh, you might have done in the slab design is actually we need to find our effective depth, right? So effective depth means 
this one that you have found in the slab design so either you can uh, you can perform it over here so you can come to the this part so it is up to you so whatever the way you wish to do you can do it right so you can consider the effective depth at at uh, this point or the this point now we can move to the loading conditions so i assume these two parameters but when you perform your design you have to exact ex i mean you have to extract all the values from this lab so you might have performed the design and you might have found the loading acting on the slabs and now what you need to do is you need to convert this at the same time you in 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 in, in addition to that we need to add the self weight of the beam as well right so 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 whatever the uh, parameters you have found it right in in addition to that we need to add the self weight of the slab to that and then we, we have to find i mean uh, uh, we have to find our gk and the qk right so you need to do that uh, you cannot just assume the way i did that right so if i if i write everything that will be copy and paste so i just wanted to do your design so um, uh, most of the thing i just done it as per the thing that i assume so when we perform the design or when you perform the design you can use the exact value you have uh, you have calculated from your previous design and then i have assume my gk and the qk and then the next step is to i need to find my design load ft so to find the design load i am applying the partial safety factors and i have found my design load so right after i have found my design load this is the method i have explained you in the last class and even you can see the you can see in the first video that i have uploaded right so i did i did the same example right so you can see it so what i am going to do is i just apply this this load i have found and this is the area of my slab right so i have found my area of the slab in 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 addition to that i am just dividing by 4 which since i have the four equal part so i don't need to uh, calculate for i mean i don't need to calculate separately and phi is the i need to convert this load as the udl so that is what i have done it here and i i calculate it. so this thing i have already explained it right so even if you don't understand you can go and i mean you can go and read this part so you will have a clear idea about it so up to this level we have done it and the third part is i mean not the third part is the next part is the structural analysis so to find the structural analysis where i mean we will be finding the bending movement and the shear force so the, uh, there are there are different ways that we can perform i mean we can calculate the shear force and bending movement right so you can see here where the bending movement and shear force can be found in this method but since i am dealing with the uh, simply supported beam i know from my previous like the previous strength of material knowledge right so, so you know so if you if it is udl you know the movement will be i mean movement can found as the wl squared over a and the uh, shear force will given as the w l by 2 this thing that you already know right so i am going to use it here but one thing i want to mention that here whatever the calculate i mean when you are when you are dealing with the beam you don't always go this table either you can calculate it your med with the wl squared over 8 as med as wl by 2 for whatever the beam design you are uh, you are performing but these things only will applicable when we just going with the mid rise of the building so if you want to do the high rise buildings then there's no option you need to go to this table but since we are dealing with the uh, low rise building sorry we can either go with this method or the accurate method that we can calculate it through this so there will not be any i mean any wrong in that so most of the time we do something like this and we did the cal i mean we do the calculation so you know uh, you know what is w and l squared also you know and a then you will be eventually find your med for the design movement and the 
design shear force right so do you have any issues up to this level so if you have any issues uh, you can send it through the chat it's up to you now we can move to the bending movement design or the flexural design or sometimes we in the uh, last class we mentioned it as the the uh, i mean we are going to perform for the mid span design i mean mid span we are going to consider the mid span and we are going to perform the flexural design right you know this equation but before i applied the uh, the the parameter to this equation so what i am going to do is right i am going to calculate my effective depth so you know what does it mean by effective depth so this will be the effective depth if you consider the beam beam cross section right so this will be my effective depth that is t now i need one more parameters which is the b so generally when we are dealing with the slab what we did was as i mentioned that we just consider the one meter strip or the thousand millimeters strips and we perform the calculation but when we are dealing with the beam we are i mean we we don't do something like that so i mean what we are gently doing is we are going to assume this b and we are going to perform the calculations whether this is satisfy i mean this is satisfying or not right so you can see so i am going to assume my b as the 250 millimeter before you assume as 250 uh, millimeter again you need to uh, go for the fire calculations since i assume my ast uh, ast 45 millimeter my b minimum should be should be 200 millimeter or higher so that's the reason why i just assume as the, assume as the 250 millimeter but if i assume as 300 millimeter that is also be possible but the thing is right so you can see from the both the things right so it is uh, it is 300 millimeter and it is 200 millimeter so i am just going to deal with the 250 millimeter first and i am going to check that the assume beam with this satisfying my case or not so this assumption is actually not coming uh, not coming blindly so i am based on the fire fire resistance i have calculated my b minimum and then i mean i know my uh, b minimum is 200 millimeter and based on that i have found my width of the b right and then i'm going to do the same thing that what i have done in the class right so i'm going to check whether my reinforcement condition is singly reinforcement or no so these things that we have already performed so if it is if it is doubly reinforcement case we need to do the same thing as what i have instructed right so these things that uh, even i have explained in the last recording as well so like so in case if you get as the as it as the as the double reinforcement case right you know these are the d dash and x these things you know you know we have to calculate so x is generally calculated as 0.45 d and d bar is the top cover right so either we can measure it as the top cover or the things generally it's i mean normally it's given in the example as the 50 something like yeah 50 but sometimes you need to calculate it it by yourself and then a is i mean for the for the compression member right i need to calculate by using any of these equations so either you can use this equation or this equation so that that is up to you i mean since it is your design you can design and then this is for the compression but when we are dealing with the tension right in i mean what we did i mean what we did in the last for the for the single uh, single reinforcement cases we just use only this equation but when we are dealing with the compression member we need to add addition addition to this compression member what we have calculated from here the reason is we need to i mean to understand why it is that right so we need to know about the curtailment of these beams so i mean curtailment that i will teach you in the in the detailing part but at this level 
do just add this a i mean a, the required amount of the uh, required amount of the compression steel and we can eventually find the steel reinforcement which is required and also we need to check whether it is in the limit or not so these things that you know i have explained it already and you can perform it i hope you don't have any issues up to this level because uh, there are some more chance that you most of the people will end up with the doubly reinforced uh, i mean doubly reinforced case so make sure to be understand these these procedures so these things that uh, i mean this thing that you know and one more thing i want to mention here right so you can see right up so you have found like you know 750 i mean 0.59 so we you know you know where to take these values since we are dealing with a beam we are not going to go with the spacing right so we are going to go with the numbers of bar that is being required so initial calculation you can see i have assumed as the 12 millimeter my bar i mean steel bar is 12 millimeter but here what i did was right so i just provide the 60 millimeter bar there's a reason right so you can see here if i want to satisfy this condition with, with the 12 millimeter bar right so 750 something like that so let's do it right so if i want to consider with the 12 millimeter bar so i need to minimum provide the seven numbers of bar so when you are considering the when you are considering the practical considerations right it is not always appropriate to do that because the reason is right so if it is like let's say if it is if you are going to provide the seven numbers of bar you know this will be like there will not be any space so which means that concrete cannot go into it so uh, that is one of the reason that i just ignore the 12 millimeter bar and i am just going to check with the 16 millimeter bar so to provide i mean if i want to provide the 16 millimeter with the appropriate conditions so if i can provide four numbers of bar it is satisfying my case but we cannot just stop at this or we cannot just take something like this so to check that what i am going to do is i am going to perform the spacing check right so if you if you just provide the 12 millimeter bar also that is possible but since the num but uh, generally if you consider most of the beam you might have seen some of the beams right even i can show you here so numbers of bar in the top and bottom right so generally most of the time they can go for like three numbers or the four numbers so the seven numbers is not not practical i mean it is not applicable based on the practical considerations but when it comes to theory that is fine but when we are considering the practical considerations right going seven numbers of bars is not always appropriate so that i just assume 16 millimeter and now right so you can read here side so even uh, even even you can uh, choose the three to i mean i mean 3t uh, 3t 20 it is up to you but mostly we are just going with the next part and i mean like i mean next part means let's say if you assume as 10 millimeter and it will be like uh, 9 millimeter i mean uh, nine numbers of bar then we need to go like uh, 12 and 16 something like that we used to do that you know why because of the economical consideration so it is up to you but don't jump into like 20 to i mean 12 to 20 just go the next part and check whether it is satisfying your condition or not so then next step is to i need to validate that right if i just if i just provide the 16 millimeter whatever the calculation i have made here will not be end up with any kind of issues so that i need to perform the spacing check so to perform the spacing check even you can refer the 11.2 as mentioned in the code i will just uh, show you so this are actually uh, kind of the this is what we generally mention it as the settlement of the detail you can go to the 11.2 and you can see it here 
the the the, the provisions are already mentioned right so if i want to check that right so i need to consider my bar diameter and aggregate size with aggregate size with the uh, plus 5 mm so that's the reason why i initially mentioned the aggregate size and oh it should be minimum uh, 20 mm so what i need to do is i need to uh, i need to consider the spacing of the outer bars so please look at here how did they do that right so if you consider the beam here so this is my b as i calculated as the 250 millimeter so to perform the uh, checking of spacing there are uh, there are various reasons so since i provide the four numbers of bar i'm going to have the four numbers of bar here due to checking what i am going to do is i am going to checking this space whether it is satisfying as per the values already mentioned in the code so i mean when i when i mention about the spacing this is what i mean so i need to check the spacing between the two bars so to perform that what i need to do is right i need to again do the sum of the mathematical calculation so this is not mentioned in the hero code because it is just a calculation or the uh, mathematical calculation like right so you can see this is the 250 as my b width or the width of the beam and 2 is the 2 part of the cover so i need to deduct the cover part so if you want to just consider this i mean if you want to just uh, find the space right so you can do that now like so the both part will be the 35 so this is the cover and then now, since my numbers, I mean, I am, I am, I am, I am providing the four numbers of bar, so I need to de I need to deduct this part as well. And in in addition to that, since I will have the uh, shear link, something like this, so we'll do that later. But we have to assume these things as well. So since I am going to provide the shear links, right? So this will be the two part, and the shear links is six millimeter. So I need to deduct that one and. I need to find the spacing of the bars. So for my calculation, I got it as the uh, 34.6. And these are the provisions that already mentioned in the 11.2. So you can see, right? So the 12 is generally the bar diameter. So it should be, I mean, it should be 16. Please change it. So it should be 16 and 20 plus five. So which is the aggregate size plus the thickness. I mean the additional the uh, deviation and 20 is the minimum and i need to find which is the maximum and i need to check with the values that i have got it from here right so if this value is higher than this right so so the whatever the values i mean uh, i mean i mean whatever the things i have taken which is satisfying the my assumption if not what will happen we need to again go and change the dimension and and then we need to again satisfy this condition so that is what we are going to do that so again we need to come from top to i mean from the cover calculations to the bottom up to this level if it is not satisfied right so one more thing i want to mention that right so you might have studied in the in the concrete technology right so when the concrete when we are pouring the concrete, so these are the practical con conditions we need to understand. So these are the practical conditions that we need to understand, right? So here we have mentioned it as the 20 plus 5. So the reason is, let's say when you are, when you, when you are, I mean, having the formwork, something like that. So you, you know what does it mean by formwork? So formwork is just holding the concrete or the fresh concrete. So when you are pouring the foam work, right, so beam will be something like that, right? I mean, the beam reinforcement will be something like that. This will be the step. So when you pour the concrete, right, so general aggregate uh, thickness is like 20 millimeter. So why is it uh, limited to 20 millimeter? You know, when we do with the pump car, so the pump car means, you know what? So when we are dealing with the pump car, right, if we, if we go with the higher number, I mean, higher size of aggregate, the pump car will be blocked so which means that we cannot pump the concrete to the the uh, high-rise part so so if 
if this condition i mean if this condition is not satisfied there are various way that we can pour the concrete but when we are dealing with the pump car it should be 20, uh, it should be 20 mm so if it is if it is 20 mm you know when you consider the concrete the strength is generally gained from the aggregates right so if if you want to have i mean if i need to fill this part right i should allow my minimum aggregate size i mean the maximum aggregate size to this i mean i mean uh, which is i mean uh, within this spacing so that it is generally mentioning as the 20 plus 5 which is the deviation so that's the reason why we just need to calculate so this is the one reason and uh, one more reason is what is i mean I mean, what is the thing I have mentioned? So, if you look at even in this, in the, in the, in the site conditions, right? So, when you, when you, when you pour the concrete here, right? The concrete should go in evenly to the both the beam and the slab. So, if the thickness, I mean, if the spacing between the bar is less, like you know, the spacing between the bars is less than the 20 millimeter. So, what will happen is aggregate will not flow to the beam. Eventually, the strength of the beam will be affected. So that's the reason why we need to check this part as well. So I clear now. If you are going to do the design, so try to understand the things. Okay, that's fine. Now the next issues, please look at from here as well. Right. So I just made the SM, I mean I have made the two assumptions, right? So I'm going to use as the 16 millimeter and I'm going to use my width as the 250 millimeter and this is satisfied up to this level. So I don't have any issues so far. Now I'm going to move to the deflect, I mean, deflection check. So when we perform the deflection checks, right? So, you know, I mean, we need to take the, I mean, uh, 0.25 percentage. So this is the actually coming from the national annex right or the Sri Lankan condition so that that's the reason why so you know how to calculate these values so to calculate these values again I need to deal with the this part right so you can calculate and perform the deflection right so since it is SLS condition we need to satisfy this part as well so you know already you perform in the slab design and you can perform the same thing so anyway I, I just give the description then still still you can go through it and have an i mean have a look at each of the thing so these are the lod allowable and these things that you can do it and this would be less than 1.5 so this is also coming from the national annex right and up to up to this level you can perform it now you can see here this is my allowable right and this is my actual so my actual is higher than the allowable Right, so actually is higher than the allowable, which means that this condition, so whatever the assumption that I have I have made from here is not satisfying the I mean it is not satisfying my deflection conditions. So again, what you have to, I mean what they need to do is again I need to redo the calculations from here onwards. So again, from the I mean I need to perform the calculate from here to up to this level up to the level until my deflection is satisfied. So you might have asked, I mean, you might have asked, what if I, you know, I can even take the 300 millimeter and even I can increase the bar size and everything. But if I can do that, there's no use of design. No. So design means that I need to balance the stability as well as the economical consideration. So I, 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 I always try to be minimalize the things. So, I mean, I have some, I have seen some of the steel design as well, right? right? So some right after you didn't get like, you know, closer to one, the most of the people choose the higher section and go with like 2.0 values. So that's not the economical. I mean, that's not the, that is not economical. So that's why I, I, I reduced the marks to some of the people. Right? Most of the people did right, but some of are like, so that's the reason why. So again, I need to change the bar diameter and the the first thing that I, I mean I can check with the bar diameter or you can just increase the bottom and increase the 
I mean, uh, increase the uh, dimension of bar and we can perform the calculation. So mostly if we go with the 20 millimeter, this condition will be satisfied, right? So since it is 17.57, right? So if I, if I, if I increase little bit, what will happen is this part will be, I mean, the spacing will be reduced at the same time, eventually my total area concern also will be varied with the addition of the, I mean, width of the pin. So up to this level, you need to do something like this. So, uh, uh, so in order to, you can see, right after I have performed up to this, I mean, up to this level, I didn't even finalize the, my dimension of the thick, I mean, the, the dimension of the beam or the numbers of bar that's been required. So that is very, I mean, that's one of the usual things when we perform with the design. So we cannot just finalize just right after we have done and made the, made the assumption. So we need to perform the assumption and we always have to validate whether it is satisfying the condition or not. If it is not, again, we need to do for, right? So you can see here, right? Again, I need to perform the cover calculation flexural design and again I need to check the deflection check but if you look at your slab design right you might have seen right after this calculation I perform the minimum and the maximum steel requirement no so the reason why I didn't include at this point because I need to check up to this level whether my condition is satisfied or not so if it is not satisfied again I need to come from top to bottom so it, it will make my i mean it will consume uh, more time if i do the same thing again and again right you know if i calculate maximum and minimum so right after i have i have i have uh, calculate the entire things for the uh, satisfying the deflection case i'm just then i'm going to check with the maximum and minimum area of the steel so that's like you know the these are the uh, uh, i mean these are the tricky thing that we can do it and reduce your burden right so the next step is right so right after these conditions if this condition are satisfied i need to go with the minimum and maximum area of the steel that is being required so that is what i have done here so this equation that you can already i mean you will be able to find from the 12 i mean the section 12 right so when we are dealing with the beams I mean the one way when we are dealing with the beams, right, we need to go with that one. So most of the beams that, you know, you can come from here, right, so since we are dealing with the beams, we need to check the AS minimum and maximum based on this considerations. So that is what I have done it. So it is same as what we did it even for the slabs. So you can do it by yourself and up to this level, there will not be I hope there will not be any issues. And here onwards, the critical part will going to come. So up to now, up to this level, right after you have done up to this level, you will be able to almost complete the, the dimension of the beam, right? So the height and B and a number of reinforcement bar required of the beam, right? So since it is single reinforcement, so right after did though i have included the shear i mean shear links and everything here so uh, right after you perform up to this level your beam will be i mean beam is going to be look like something like this and when we perform the shear check only we can provide the shear for our actual drawing so up to this level you you have to find almost finalize your dimension and we can move to the shear check so the chair check is not like what we have done in the slabs, right? So it's the, this will be completely different. So I, I will explain to you now, but before that we can mark the attendance, like, you know, take, mark the attendance and we can move forward. Even though, even though we are performing this uh, shear, you need to understand that the development of the shear check or the shear under the beams or whatever the things, 
climb it is under under the under development and most of the people are doing the research on that and still trying to find the possible shear failure but the hero code is generally referring to the most the most general case that uh, how that uh, shear will be incorporated the failure of the beams so i will show you two or three videos that how the uh, the shear will be make the beam to be fail right so the shear is very very critical so we need to be very very keen on the calculation so that's the reason why the calculation method for the beam is very different because you know beam is very critical beam and i mean each member i mean every member is, is very critical but when it comes to beam it is i mean the the considerations for the beam is generally very higher so this is how beam is going to be failed i will show you a video and before that i just want to give an idea right so if you can look at the beam so i mean if you consider the beam so whatever the beam generally if, if you take the simply support if, if you if you take a simply support to whatever the beam right so generally most of the beam right you know why we are just putting pin and roller supported to make this is as the simply supported right so rather than putting the i mean two pin joints right so you know that right right so if i consider the udl so udl or point load or whatever it is so most of the time right so the shear will be higher at the support condition so whatever the support condition it is the shear will always be higher at the support condition and almost zero or very low at the midpoints so that's the reason why most of the drawing if you had a chance to look at that right so the the support condition generally having the more shear reinforcement than the other i mean more more shear force i mean shear reinforcement than the other things like you know you can see that you know the spacing between the support conditions are getting high because the reason is generally the support conditions the amount of shear will be always higher for in in some construction then they don't just provide something like that so they they usually find the minimum uh, minimum number of i mean the minimum spacing and they are just substituting to the in their things right so that's not always economically possible and not appropriate when we considering the maximum number of steel but anyway we will do the same over here because that's a little bit advanced and we need to i mean we need to i mean we need to make the beam as per, uh, segments and we need to perform the analysis that is that will take too much time but here you need to understand one thing that right always the shear will be higher at the support so near the support where the shear force are created the principal stress become in incline yeah the reason is so when you considering the failure of the shear right so the most of the failure of the shear is occur in low i mean which is occur with respect to the support condition right so the most of the the most of the failure that will happen right as the incline form for the shear because if you ask me why is that right but it is like you know generally this kind of the failure pattern we can refer it as the strut or the thrust way of failure so you might have studied about the thrust right so this kind of failure we can refer it as the the strut kind of failure so even if you take the masonry walls or whatever it is if you want to talk, i mean if you want to talk about the shear failures we always going with the strut model so they are right you have study i mean you are studying the finite element right you might have studied about the sap 2000 or whatever the software that you might have used right so when you are using with those kind of the things so if it is masonry or whatever it is generally we need to provide the uh, shear angle so i mean if, i mean shear angle means right so whatever the I mean these are the parameters generally obtained from the this kind of research method so the shear angles mean what generally the angle of the failure of this beam right so how this beam will i mean will be failed with respect to shear with with respect to particular angle so generally the hero code is mentioning the angle right so theta is between 22 to 45 degrees right so 22 to 45 degree is acceptable for the 
range i mean if it is between i mean the maximum is between the 22 to 45 then we are safe with the shear so we don't need to be worried much so if it is not we need to change the dimension or the bars that we can provide it in order to be uh, in order to be I mean, counteract the shear failures right so as the, the same thing is mentioned here but this is actually the de uh, design considerations so i will come uh, before i come to here i i will just uh, show you if we if we i mean if you are not providing the shear reinforcement the failure will be very like you know the catastrophic right so i will show you you can see in the video so first we can see the simul model or just the model failure and then we can move to the next part so hope you can see that So you can see that in this part they they don't provide any kind of the shear reinforcement so this the shear reinforcement is generally marked in the vertical i mean in the in the in the vertical line so this is generally referred as the vertical shear links right so the, this is marked in the vertical line but you can see in this support conditions they did not provide any kind of the uh, any kind of shear reinforcement so we can see how this So you can see the loading is applied already. So you can see when there's no reinforcement, shear reinforcement, right? So the, it, it is failing with the angle. So that's why I mentioned it over here. So you can see. Right, so you can see why shear is very critical. Failure is very, I mean, it's like the catastrophe. So you can see the in the actual model, it's, it's like the actual beam. So you can see how the failure is going to happen. So the loading is increasing. So you can see how this, you know, catastrophe it is. Right, so this is what I mean. This is what will happen if you are not if you are not providing this here. Right? Also, you can see here when there's uh, no 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 shear reinforcement. Right, so it is generally failed with an angle. So this angle is limited in the in the code as the between the uh, 22 to 25. Right, so there was one more video. Yeah. Like if, if, so anyway, this is how the shear failure is going to be happen. So just understand that the shear will, I mean, the the failure of shear will happen with an angle. So this angle is always limited with the 22 angle, I mean, 22 degree to 45. And based on this value, our, our, our calculation is going to be happen. So if you consider the shear, right, generally, we need to check with the two kind of locations right so you can i mean when you perform the design you will understand so if you consider the shear at the support of course it will be higher so we need to check the shear at this point at this at the support at the same time for we are going to consider the distance from as the d so the d can be assumed as the you know the 300 millimeter or 400 millimeter with the length of the 5 meter beam so generally most of the beam will be like as the five meter so we can assume something like this and we can perform the calculation so what we are going to do is in the in the in the shear calculation we need to check for the shear at the support and we need to consider the distance as the d 
and we can assume and we, we need to perform the next part of the calculation so that's what the thing so these are the shear links that we can provide it so generally the most of the shear links are like this cache shape and if there is some of the additional cases or additional requirements we we usually go for the different kind of the size or the different kind of the arrangement that has been possible so right after you perform the design your eventual design will be something like this so to perform the shear calculation i have just uh, show you the flow diagram so you can either flow the same thing here so rather than i am um, explain it here i am going to explain the actual design right so to perform the shear design i need to go with the 7.3.2 so when you perf let me go right so you can see the shear and everything has been mentioned over here so generally it will be coming to the shear right so she has the separate section you can go through it right so to perform the shear i need these parameters so vrdc means right precision of the member without shear reinforcement i need to check that right so i need to check with the yielding conditions and i need to consider the compression of struts right so the strut that i have mentioned so the strut means right i need to check whether the strut is appropriate i mean it can be sustained the shear so the reason is why i need to check this strut so generally hero code is assuming that the whatever the concrete that we can provide it, the concrete has some kind of the some kind of the shear capacity right so it may sustain some of the shear. i mean it, it may sustain or it will be counteract the effect of effect of shear right so that's why we i mean we are assuming it over here right so when we perform the uh, shear check at the support and there are one more check we will be performing right as the check at distance d so that's what i mentioned so i need to check the i mean i need to check the shear exactly on the support right and right i mean with the distance of d in order to be checked that whether everything will be correct because the reason is even though the support has the higher amount of the shear right still i have the support to resist this part but if you consider right you know very very near area i saw the the shear will not be like you know there will not be much variation or very very slight variation but the, this effect may lead this part to be failing so i need to check my support condition first and then i need to check my i mean i i need to check with the distance of d so that's the reason why we need to check with the distance of d so these are the equation that's been already given even if you go for the things right so you can see as i need to first check with this shear capacity checks the equations are already given here right so you can see Two, uh, two different kind of equation one is for the vertical links other one is for the inclined links right so most of the time right most of the simple cases we always go with the vertical links so the vertical links means right so it's the same thing that i have mentioned like you know this is what we mention it as the vertical link so whatever the things like you know could be something like this. so these are the vertical links but inclined kind of uh, shear links is possible right you know if some kind of situation we may have to provide the shear link something like this to sustain the shear so this kind of things also possible but these are the very very critical case but we are not I mean we are going to just i mean we are going to just check only with the vertical links so you need to use this equation so when you use these equations there are some of the parameters that you don't i mean you need so bw that you know it is generally the width of the beam and set you know 0.95 d right so set is 0.95 d you know that from even for the previous calculation we did the same right so the fcd is right so this is the design i mean i mean this is actually the design compressive strength 
so this can be found actually from your actual characteristic strength by dividing the partial safety factor so uh, i mean the vector value of for the concrete it's like 1.5 now so when you consider the steel this is steel for 1.15 and this is for 1.5 so you need to understand that and when we considering about the theta as i mentioned that theta can be vary with the 22 to 45 degree right so in the first case what we are going to do is we are going to assume the minimum i mean minimum angle and we are going to perform our calculation so our assumption will be theta as 22 and whether we are going to check that whether this vrd max is within the range of our ved that we have calculated from our structural analysis so that is what we are going to first check with the shear capacity check right so you can see the same thing that i have done it over here right so to find the vrd max right i need to find my z and v and fcd so these things that you can find as we mentioned in the code and i'm going to assume as the theta is 22 degree so you can see the clarification i mean the description here why i choose the 22 right so initially i need i need to with the 22 i i need to check whether my vrd max is higher than my ved so ved is actually obtained from the i mean actually obtained from the structural analysis so you can see from the second things right VD is calculated as the 48.75. So right after you have, I mean, you have found your F, I mean, uh, VRD max. So you can see this value is higher than the, I mean, this value is higher than the VED. So this is satisfied. In case, if it is not satisfied, there, I mean, we cannot change. I mean, we don't change the section or everything. Right, so next step is we need to check our angle whether it is in the limit or not. So, which means that as I mentioned that my theta is varying between the 22 to 45 degree. Right. So, if you if you consider the 22 to uh, 45, so first I have assumed as the 22 and I perform my calculation and eventually I end up with the VRD max as the this value. Now I need to perform the reverse calculation. So that's what we have done. The same thing for the cover calculation. Here also we need to perform the reverse calculation and I need to measure my theta, whether it is, with, you know, the theta, whether with, within the 45 to within the range of 22. I need to check this part. Right? So you can see it from here. If theta is higher than 45, then the diagonal congress start is overstressed. So either the beam should be resized or the compressive strength of the concrete should be increased. So if the theta value that you have calculated, right, is not, not within this range, right, you need to change your section and you need to perform the design again. Right. So that's what up to now we, ha we have, I mean, this is about we need to perform for the shear capacity check. Right. So up to now, I don't, I mean, I hope you don't have any issues. So if it is not satisfied, what we do is we are going to do the reverse calculation and I'm going to check whether my theta is within this range. So to perform that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider my VRD max as the VED. So VED means that we have, I mean, I, 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 I calculated that value, right, from the structural analysis and I'm going to check that whether my theta is in that range. So if it is not, then we need to resize and perform the design from the start part to up to this level. So this is what about the shear capacity check. Right. So though the shear is very critical, the check is like, you know, whatever the things it's already mentioned in the equation. So don't, I mean, don't ask that um, how we can get these equations because as I mentioned that these are of course coming from the research studies and they are they are adopting it so if you are doing the research and structural analysis you will have an idea this kind of equation so this actually mention it as the dx i mean 
okay these are coming from experimental and some of are from the analytical equations and based on the i mean reliability analysis and everything they perform this analysis right so just for information so right after you check the shear capacity at the support the next step is as i mentioned that right i need to perform with the d but here you can see since this case is satisfied i, I don't need to provide any shear links as per this condition right so since it is adequate i mean i mean adequate i don't need to be provide i mean there's no need for the shear reinforcement at this level because the the meaning that i mentioned that if this condition is not satisfied in case you need to calculate your these values and again you need to check now so if this condition is between the 22 to 45 then i need to provide the shear reinforcement right so and i need to compensate the shear that has been occurred in the structure if this condition is not satisfied you cannot just provide the shear links you need to change the section and do the calculation up to this level and check so you know i mean you understand that no right so but here since i don't have any issues i don't need to provide the shear link at sub now i need to check the distance with the d so to perform the distance with d i'm just going to assume as my d is 300 millimeter so this is my assumption that i am making it so you can even go for 400 or 500 but since my beam width is like two i mean uh, 250 like 250 what i do is i am just going with the very near part so for my calculation like i am going to go as the 300 millimeter so this is this is my assumption right so in order to be validated i am very safe right so if i just take the very close part i will be safe no so that's the reason why so i just need to find this i mean this ved so if, if, if you look at even here I need to find this VED2 or the things. So you know that the triangular method like you know interpolations that we can perform it. So since this is uh, two, uh, 2500 so you can detect this value as this is the 300 and you can do the I mean interpolation and you will be able to find your VED is how much. So this is also the approximations but it is acceptable so to find the VED at this point i am using the uh, interpolation and i am finding my VED. right after you have found your VED, now you have to check the things right so you can see here you need to go with the again you need to go with the resistance of the member without shear reinforcement right so you, you know why i need to go with this part because i don't need to provide the any shear reinforcement at the support condition so i need to check with this so i need to check whether my shear is satisfied with this condition so the same thing we did it for this lab design right so you can perform it right so these parameters you know where to calculate it and you can perform this and check that whether your value is in the acceptable range or not. So, right after you calculate your VRDC, you, you know, uh, you know how to calculate this, right? So, I I got it as the uh, 41.47, and then I need to check with the VED. So you need, I mean, you know this V minimum, this calculation you already know that. So since my VRD or the you know the resistance is uh, 41.47 but my VED is 42.68 so which means that my VED I mean VED is higher than the resistance value so which means that so from here I can understand that the shear reinforcement is required for this condition so I need to provide the shear reinforcement for these conditions but one thing you need to understand that right even though even right if you let's say if you just end up with like you know this case also satisfied so which means that 
you don't i mean which i mean which which that i mean which does i mean which does not mean that you don't need to provide any shear reinforcement you always have to provide the minimum reinforcement that is being required right so this is must so the shear reinforcement is whether you whether your condition is satisfied or not you still have to provide the minimum amount or the minimum required shear reinforcement so which can be found exactly from like page number 40 70 here you can see the shear reinforcement thing you can see and you will be i mean uh, you can read it anyway i will i will explain through the design but you can read it the shear reinforcement that is been required always the minimum shear reinforcement should be, uh, should be i mean should be provided for that conditions so you can see the same thing here now i am going to provide the shear reinforcement as required so up to this level i am checking that whether the shear reinforcement is required or not so my condition i already have i mean i i got it as i need the shear reinforcement so this is for the shear reinforcement calculations but in case if you are not i mean if if you end up with like you you don't need to provide the shear reinforcement then i will show you the way there's a different way that we can calculate this part but first we will look at this case and i mean right after you understand this you will be able to understand the the case where the shear reinforcement is not required so first we can look at that the case that uh, the, uh, the shear reinforcement is required so in order to we provide the shear reinforcement right so again i need to go for 7.33 the same thing that you have seen here right so if the if the shear reinforcement is uh, if the shear reinforcement is required then i need to refer this clause and i need to provide my i mean i need to evaluate my vrdx and based on that i will be able to find asw over s so the asw over s means asw is the shear reinforcement that's been uh, required right or the, the total area or the cross sectional area or the total area of that right so you can see that is actually the uh, cross sectional area right so not about the total area and s is the spacing of the i mean spacing means right so the distance between one shear link to other uh, other shear links here also we will do some more assumption and we will be validate that our design is correct or not <coughs> so these are the fy i mean fywd and these parameters you can calculate it by re by referring this code so alpha is zero for vertical link so if the, if alpha is zero then cot alpha will come <clears throat> sorry the uh, cot alpha will come as the zero as well so that's the thing that you need to understand so you can see this the equation and there's uh there's equilibrium condition that's already mentioned right so you can apply this value to this equation and you can perform this calculation so you know this every values right so what i am going to do is i am just going to take aws as my case so this is what i need it and i need to find the spacing of the spacing of the shear links and i know already i am going to provide the 6 mm diameter bar for my shear links that as i mentioned the first ever description that you can see. first and foremost description that you can see as 6 mm so i know that my space i mean the diameter of the bar so if you know the diameter of the bar right so you can calculate the uh, cross sectional area no how we can do that that is the phi r squared by 4 so if you substitute phi r squared by 4 so r i know that which is the i mean sorry phi d squared by 4 so r i know that this is the 6 millimeter and 4 and you know these equations which in order to find the cross sectional area and eventually you will be able to 
get this value as like you know i got it as the 28.3 so you can uh, i mean uh, you can check this value so right after i have found my asw there's one tricky thing that you need to understand there's something called legs so you can see here the two legs so if you consider the being right so generally we are just providing the shear link something like that no right so we we are just providing the shear link something like this so these are the thing we can mention it as the legs so since i am just going to consider this simply very 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 simple uh, very very simple uh, 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 shear links so which means that i have the two legs so i need to multiply this cross sectional area with the two in order to find the total uh, total uh, total cross sectional area that i am going to provide it as the shear links so once you have i mean once you have found this value as the asw you need to substitute here and eventually you will be able to end up your s s is spacing for the generally sometimes you can refer it as the s minimum right so you will be able to calculate your s minimum then for for my case it should be less than 283 millimeter so if it is 283 millimeter i am just going to make the assumption that i am going to provide the t6 bar with the spacing of 200 millimeter so this is my assumption so right after i made this assumption right how i am going to check that whether this assumption is in the range or not okay i need to check the maximum longitudinal spacing between the links right so to calculate that again right so you need to go for page number 70 and you need to satisfy this equation and if this is uh, satisfied right so that uh, that is what i have done so alpha is 90 for the vertical links so right after you substitute all the value eventually i ended up with like 189.75 as the maximum spacing but i have just i have just provide the uh, 200 millimeter so which means that it is not satisfying this condition so i am just going to change the spacing as the 100 uh, 175 so eventually i need to provide the c6 bar with the 175 spacing so what we do is we are uh, we are just first making the assumption right and then we are going to check the same thing with the uh, whatever the mention in the code and we are going to validate that whether our assumption is in the range or not if it is not what we generally do is we are just i mean we are going to change the assumption and we are going to exactly get the values what, what is mentioned in the euro code so that's what we are doing here and these are for the shear reinforcement area i mean the total whether the shear amount of amount of shear reinforcement that we have provided is in the range or not so this is same as what we do for the maximum and minimum and you can refer to this part and you can check the values whether it is in the range so most of the time it will be in the range if it is satisfied this condition so i'm not me this is the simple thing but the critical thing is up to this level so right after you have completed your design you always have to show with the show with the detailing right so as i mentioned that i'm going to provide i mean i didn't change anything so it is not satisfied but when you substitute the value you need to change and perform the design i'm not i mean i, I didn't re, uh, i didn't uh, recalculate it so my my height is i know as a 300 and uh, with this 250 here i put it as the 40 16 so you don't need to put like you know you don't need to like you don't need to mention on the each pass if you just mark it on the one bar as 40 16 that is fine and then 
this is the share link so as i mentioned that i am going to provide it as t uh, t6 with the 175 millimeter and that's also that here you can see even also in this figure as well right since i just uh, uh, perform the design as the singly reinforced case i mean singly reinforced case in order to make this i mean in order to make this traps to be stand at least i need some of the point like you know in order like the, there should be some of the support to just to tie this uh, shear links and not making to move from here or there when i am pouring the concrete so that the code is recommended like you know either you can go with the like so you can i i already mentioned here during the construction tt2 i mean 2t uh, i mean 2t12 bars are generally provided if it is singly reinforcement case so that's why i have mentioned it here so this is not coming from the design this is actually coming from the construction practice so this is my the this is actually my cross section and this is the my total drawing or the beam drawing so you can see here right so right after actually you perform the design so if, if you take this as the beam so in your design up to this level what you have done is right so you you have just found the top and i mean the bottom reinforcement and the shear links that's been required so additionally you can see there's a like this kind of the angle sections are provided already right so this kind of section but here right after you perform the design you, i mean this will be something like this so i mean why do we need to put this kind of angle sections so you know it will make like it will uh, consume my steel no? but uh, there's a reason right so right after you provide this if, if you are on the side you will understand that so generally we just tie these two area i mean uh, uh, these two bars and just make it as box so when you pour the concrete so what will happen is the concrete is very I mean it is it is very like you know uh, uh, heavy so it will move the bars to other part or sometimes what will happen is right so if the bar is just straight when they just apply the things or the when the i mean when the structure is very loaded what will happen is there's a chance that this bar can be moved from here or there so in order to reduce the movement i need to just provide it as the this angle sections so how much i can provide it as this angle section which is generally pi into the bar diameter so i need to multiply this length with the pi into bar diameter so where did i find that still you can find everything in the code as it is specified here so i need to go for 11 and you can see here generally it's like pi into pi so these are the detailing part that's been required so that's what i wanted to mention up to this level so this is for the simply supported beam that's the same thing that we can i mean we'll be using for the i mean other kind of beam but other kind of beam is like you know the additional part is come as we need to find the effective area of that of that beam so i mentioned that what why do i need to find the effective area so these things we can see on the next i mean next class i will explain the flange beam and then our beam design will be over right so other part i have already explained it but this part as i didn't explain but the last class on the last recording you can see the explanation to this but anyway i will explain this thing in the next class as well so that's all for today and uh, if you have any question you can ask now so otherwise you can leave thank you for participating